so yes we are back uh, to the last module of uh, z section uh, lecture series and building services 3 air conditioning mechanical transportation and fire protection uh, let me just yeah right so we started uh, with the Mo with module 4 and we studied about the basic uh, uh, starting with fire classification of fire causes of fire hazards and uh, in the next lecture I told you about passive fire protection techniques followed uh, later by active fire uh, controller protection in buildings and now we have reached the end of uh, this topic which is the fire and also this marks the end of this lecture series uh, where we will be doing the last subheading of module 5 which deals with NBC requirements for fire safety national building code requirements for fire safety all right so uh, uh, yeah so I have structured uh, this session again into two parts not three parts like how we did usually in the previous lectures uh, this is a lecture which is going to be in fact very short uh, perhaps shorter than the uh, other lectures of mine uh, but it has uh, you know heavy uh, references to standards especially national building code and uh, the references within national building code and also references outside national building code to various other IS standards so even though the PPT content is going to be uh, short it is really uh, important that we understand this is going to have uh, major references right so for us to understand this is not to be seen as just as uh, just a PPT content uh, it is very difficult to put all of them into PPT where you will have paragraphs and paragraphs uh, to understand, to comprehend the information. I would, uh, let's say I would uh, start with uh, basic rules for fire, fire protection, run through a couple of slides and we will jump on to uh, the code itself where I will try to explain uh, which part of the code to refer how was the nature in which it is developed uh, which part to refer which is that part which corresponds to our, uh, our topic at hand and uh, how to read understand the uh, references within the code references outside the code uh, with respect to the topic again at hand uh, and we stop there for a break we move on to the next part which is firefighting requirements for high raised buildings in India so again uh, we will uh, probably the next the second part what we will do is we will not have any PPT content at all uh, we will have to uh, uh, understand that topic it is better that we jump to the NBC itself to understand what uh, NBC talks about high raise buildings and firefighting requirements for high raise buildings works right so that would uh, sum up um, this particular subheading which deals which says uh, rules for fire protection and uh, firefighting requirements for high raise buildings in India so this is all uh, again a word of uh, caution uh, I am still not sure uh, how one can how we can you know uh, attend to questions when when there are questions from uh, this particular part in your exams uh, you should uh, uh, know the code how it works and all that to answer a question so it is up to the individual to figure that out but uh, it is important I would stress the importance here lies in understanding which code to refer when and for what so when you know NBC NBC is always seen as a, a Bible for construction in India even though most of us are even scared to just look at it because we have we think that it, there's so much that it refers to we don't know where to even look at so it is important I feel that we should know where to look at when we 
uh, need a certain uh, specific set of data uh, and how to read between NBC and how do you refer to standards outside NBC right so all this we I would use the word let's say we have to familiarize ourselves to the code book that we are talking about so we're going to take uh, fire uh, as in this module the, this particular lecture series lecture as an instance to understand the way NBC is drafted mm, that 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 is that is exactly why I said uh, when when it does a huge set of data with so much of references to each other it becomes a bit difficult to uh, memorize that and write it uh, in an exam right so let's not shift the focus towards uh, to an uh, exam examination perspective or, or an academic perspective I would again repeat please try to understand the stress factor here which is how to refer to NBC when we are looking for a set of or a specific data right with this I will take you to the part one so uh, remember we are not talking about life safety we are not talking about fire prevention we are talking only about fire protection it says rules for fire protection the rules for fire protection of course it varies in uh, when, when you talk about the rules it varies with uh, uh, the respective state you are in the uh, city you are in depending upon how big the city is and the nature of the city the uh, the urban body of the city would have their own rules laid out but apart from that we are trying to identify what are what are the common rules expectations listed in NBC right so I will start with fire protection they this particular topic uh, remember we are going to go back to NBC and see all these topics out there again after I complete the PPT so just try to follow uh, the structure of it so that again we understand where to look at the same data in NBC right so the fire protection topic starts with extinguishers uh, all buildings depending upon the occupancy use and height shall be protected by fire extinguishers hose reels wet riser downcomer yard hydrants automatic sprinkler installation deluge system high or medium water velocity water spray foam water mist systems gaseous or dry powder system manual or automatic fire alarm system etc so this all that that we that is listed here is all about putting the fire off right in other words extinguish so the keyword here is all building depending upon the occupancy use height so remember the type of building a b c d e f g h and j classification of buildings as per nbc in our previous lectures yes so when they say all buildings all of them uh, remaining within their uh, classification have to follow some of these are all of the requirements given below but sir how do we know uh, which building what is needed what is not needed what are the rules when it uh, we're coming to this particular uh, uh, building type or a particular system we will see when we go to NBC right next slide next is static water storage tanks in the last lecture I told you about the requirement of a static water storage tanks right I hope we remember that a water tank which sits next to the domestic tank where this is exclusively made for uh, the sprinkler systems wet uh, uh, sprinkler systems remember that okay uh, so the, the, the by definition NBC again talks about a satisfactory supply of water for the purpose of only firefighting shall always be available in the form of either underground or at terrace level static storage tank with the capacity specified for each building with arrangements or replenishment so they say each building here right and what is varying here is 
the tank capacity right so remember this we will again see the corresponding tables in nbc and see if we can understand it better now from third i am not going to detail it out because it is not just one line definition it is going to have a huge set of uh, requirement this and that this or that we will understand it once when we get on to the nbc the code itself uh, so the third one they're talking about fire fighting pump house okay automatic sprinkler installation all right automatic high or okay and medium velocity water spray systems okay fixed foam installation okay gas based suppression system okay firefighting equipment shall be suitably located and clearly marked by luminous signs signage system okay automatic water mist system okay extinguisher systems with clean agents right so we are all talking about fighting fire some of the systems as a part of syllabus we have studied some of it is just water mist or clean agents or types of extinguishers right some of a uh, gas based suppression system uh, this you should probably relate to your uh, AC uh, specialist air conditioning systems where you must have studied about uh, precision. Let's say, let's not complicate it. Let's say uh, server room requirements. We can't afford to have a sprinkler in case of a fire in a server room, right? Because the equipments are going to cost us a lot. There's no point in, uh, say, uh, uh, putting the fire in case of fire putting them off with water which is again the whatever damage the fire would have done the water would have done the equal damage because the electricity entire electricity electricity network data network is all uh, damaged just because they got wet so in such cases the systems that they are going to use is not water based system but gas based suppression system end of the day we should suppress the fire remember the fire triangle we have to suppress either one of the three or four that we cut up the fire thereby the idea is to save the property and also the lives right so when the property is very expensive we we started people started looking out for alternative arrangements and that's why we have gas based system so many other systems right so okay so the, from here we will definitely go back to the nbc and uh, uh, have a look at all of this but uh, before that we uh, we will also understand what are the other standards uh, which uh, may be applicable to us in this context uh, a bureau of indian standards has formulated more than 150 standards on fire safety in buildings and firefighting equipment and systems and this is taken uh, from this so they say important ones meaning it is it, this is not all we have so many others like is it more than 150 standards are developed and some of it is listed here for easy reference code of practice for fire safety of building electrical generating and distributing stations electrical your previous semester services right cotton textile mills exclusive rubber and plastic usage of rubber and plastic and exclusive fire safety rules corresponding to that libraries and archives iron and steel industries hotels educational institutions fire detection and alarm systems alone first aid fire extinguishers okay internal hydrants and hose reels okay temperature structures and panels okay fire protection safety signs there is exclusive uh, one exclusive standards on a uh, safety signs itself right external hydrant systems okay fixed automatic sprinkler fire extinguishing systems gaseous fire extinguishing systems hfc 227 ea what is it anybody can guess heard about it anywhere we will anyways do a search and see right water mist systems portable fire extinguishers long range foam monitors fire detection and alarm systems okay so 
this marks the end of part one but before we take a break like i told you we're going to uh, technically the session ideally should stop here but let us extend the session to understand what we just discussed uh, saw in the previous three four slides okay so i have uh, nbc open volume one opened in front of us <coughs> I'll, so as you all must be aware there are two volumes of NBC volume 1 and volume 2 so volume 1 talks about these six uh, sorry six parts yes okay so usually all the services comes in volume 2 starting from construction management to all the services usually it is listed under this building services right uh, starting with uh, ventilation, electrical services, AC, acoustics, lifts, right, and your plumbing services, and it stops with part tool assets and facility management. So, somebody who knows NBC to some extent, a basic idea of NBC would probably think fire all, uh, as a service would also be found in part two, but fire comes in part one because it is they're talking about life safety here right so fire that's why all the references that i've been giving in my previous uh, lectures is all about part four which is in volume one remember volume one whereas uh, the previous the other professors for the same subject must have referred to volume two of nbc for air conditioning systems and lifts or mechanical transportation systems right so for this as a subject we will have to study both volume 1 and volume 2 as references right so back to fire and life safety i am going to click on part 4 fire and life safety right uh, just click so it has brought us to part 4 which is uh, fire and life safety in nbc 2016 i will zoom to the contents the so scope terminologies so you may probably find all that uh, we discussed in the uh, previous lectures you would find most of it uh, wherever i've told uh, the references i would have given apt references even otherwise for example see combustible material definition is here the dry riser here right there are so many things that uh, I must have covered and there are much more things that we didn't cover in our lecture. But this is the place, right? So, I will again go back to the contents of uh, okay, fire, right? So, it starts with scope, terminology, fire prevention, safety, life safety, fire protection and additional occupancy wise requirements and it has got some 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 annexes and list of standards right this is all uh, part 4 in nbc uh, uh, about uh, fire and life safety is talking about but right now we are in the module which starts with rules for fire protection so i'm going to click on this fire protection remember we are going to check whatever i told in the ppt is right or wrong and trying to understand it more with the references is that clear okay i clicked on fire protection and we are here starts with okay fire protection if you see 5.1 fire extinguishers and firefighting installations i have just shown you this but they say water mist system gaseous system etc 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 in accordance with the provisions of various clauses given below as applicable right so the following a b c d e f g h is all going to be clauses under 5.1 which is fire extinguishers and fixed firefighting installations all right so okay let us try to understand how so this probably is important and might need your attention 
it's it's it might it might uh, look it's very simple but uh, please pay attention i'll tell you when this is the this is the main topic under which we have this topic under which we are again discussing on a range of topics or systems but they also say in accordance with something which is as applicable what is it so let me read only the first three four lines these firefighting fire extinguishing equipment and their installation shall be in accordance with the accepted standards fine are we already in a standard nbc 2016 which is again talking about some other standard 4 and under the brackets 17 how many of you know how to refer to this some of you know very good but for those who don't know i'll tell you how to read this where do we find this from what are those accepted standards that we should be referring to okay let let us go further down the extinguishers shall be mounted at a convenient height etc etc the requirements for <coughs> for these sorry shall be specified in table 7 so now there are two references here one is accepted standards 417 okay second is as specified in table 7 this i think we are very familiar if at all they say table figure we have to go back and forth and find out where table 7 is let me go uh, before that let's understand what table 7 why did they ask us to go to table 7 okay the requirements of fire fighting hydrant systems installation and capacity of okay some of that which is discussed in paragraph 1 they say shall be specified in table 7 okay so let me go to table 7 okay it's a huge table this is what we understand fine fine okay or oh, this is real huge okay so we are at uh, table 7 i hope it's okay it's screen it's the screen is completely visible uh, so it starts with the type of building occupancy if you see here so type of occupancy is nothing but the a b c d e f g h and j categories that we discussed in our previous lecture uh, and they talk about uh, fire extinguisher fire aid hose reel the tracer down comer down comer is nothing but you have a tank and uh, you have the uh, 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 pipe uh, 150 mm pipe uh, diameter pipe if i am not wrong coming to each floors to which we can connect the fire hose reel and uh, extinguish the fire right yard hydrant hydrant we must have seen the uh, hydrants when it, when it is in yard when it is a yard hydrant it is present within the campus with adequate uh, accessories and requirements to which we can connect the fire hose reel and establish uh, extinguish fire sorry and they talk about manually operated electronic system automated system underground water terrace tank water pump for underground terrace tank uh, pump capacity right so all this so it starts with type a of uh, uh, the classification which is residential building i'll see if i can zoom it a bit here right uh yeah residential building uh talks about uh 15 meter height uh, pra- uh family dwellings dormitories right hotels uh, hotels again let's take this educational buildings uh, so that we can as an example to understand uh, what it is so they say less than 15 meter in height why is it less than 15 meter and uh 15 is uh, taken as a number we will get to that uh, so less than 15 meters but it has got ground ground plus a couple of more stories so you can do the math of how many floors it can be uh, under which they say fire extinguisher there is r right which is nothing but required fire at hose reel they say required okay wet riser not required down comer not required yard hydrant not required automatic sprinkler system say is required but they also wanted to see what note 4 is okay 
the next couple of uh, the details are not required in equipments are not required and uh, terrace tank they say 10,000 and in the bracket they've said 5,000 and also to understand what bracket means they asked us to go to note 6 okay and uh, because underground is not required there is no water pump which is needed and the terrace level they said 450 and under the bracket again 450 we will see what note 4 is and what note 6 is so note 4 is about automatic sprinkler systems and note 6 is about uh, minimum pressure at the terrace tank so note 4 and note 6 okay so i am going to uh, note 4 and note 6 under the table i told you r is required and uh, N is, NR is not required. So, what is note 4? Required to be installed in basement if the area of basement exceeds, exceeds 200. <coughs> this is for automatic sprinkler system, right? So, they say it is generally not required, but if the area of the basement exceeds 200 square meters, it would be wise to provide, is what they are saying. And they say additional value given in the brackets, which is parenthesis shall be added if the basement area exceeds 200 square meter which is what how many of you remember okay so they say <coughs> note 6 so this is required but if the basement area exceeds 200 square meters we should give the amount which is provided in the bracket as well clear so now when when the height exceeds 15 meter but not exceeding 24 meter and again when it exceeds 24 meter but not exceeding 30 meters the values the requirement the values are all changing it is interesting to know fire extinguishers is going to be there as a part of the requirement fine uh, fire aid hose reel needed fine because we have couple of most couple of stories here whereas if you see uh, the 15 to 24 height limit also wet riser was not required whereas once when it exceeds 24 meters the wet riser is required why do you think suddenly they realize or suddenly somebody says 24 and plus i need a wet riser it's it's very simple uh, uh, reasoning and common sense when a fire brigade comes to extinguish a fire, sorry, when a fire brigade comes to extinguish a fire, there is a particular height limit that they can reach, fight fire with their uh, tools and you know from the brigade, right? So once when it exceeds a particular uh, height limit, it becomes difficult for them to access spaces which is under fire, and that is when they have to leave the brigade truck get inside the building and there will be a fire command center set up and all that they have to coordinate between the flows right so that is when wet risers are required so we have this wet and dry risers to which we connect our fire hose reels and go to the respective flows and fight fire all right so that is when this changes the requirement of wet riser come in they say downcomer is still not required we are talking about it in the indian context and yard hydrant is required and automatic sprinkler systems so, so basically the values here underground they say it is needed values here some of these values keep changing and uh, you know this they say is not required they also say see note 14 to understand what the pump capacity talks about let us quickly see note uh, 14 before we move from this table Note 14 says provide required. Don't worry if you're not able to read it. I'm reading it out for you. You can always go to NBC and refer. Provide required number of set of pumps, each consisting of one electric and one diesel pump. One electric and one diesel pump. Diesel pump is of standby. Of capacity 1620 liter per minute. One electric pump of capacity 180 liter per minute. Again, they say C figure 11, 
see also see nodes 22 and 23 okay now 22 and 23 one set of pumps shall be provided for each hundred hydrants or path thereof with a maximum of two sets in case of more than one pump set installation both the pump sets shall be interconnected at the delivery headers alternative to provision of additional set of pumps objective can be met by providing additional diesel pump of the same capacity and doubling the water tank capacity as required for one set of pumps right maybe it's it's sounding a bit too much but there is nothing because we are just referring to standards now we have to go back to this particular space where i told you we refer table 8 so if if they ask you to refer table 8 sorry 7 you know where it was if we have to refer to table 8 we know where it is it must be somewhere okay so table 8 is here right so this becomes easy between uh, the code we can always refer to figures and tables right but i also told you about uh, this right 417 pay attention these fire extinguishing equipment and their installation shall be in accordance with accepted standards 417 417 what do you mean by 417 here right we i will take you to the beginning of this let's go to the contents in the list of standards in under fire module uh, chapter part 4 there's something called list of standards in the bottom right you can see that i'm clicking on that it says the following list of records those standards which are acceptable as good practice and accepted standards in the fulfillments of the requirements of the code the latest version shall be done adopted time to time etc etc remember we are here why we came here is to find out what 417 is right so we are already in chapter 4 so no need to worry about the 4 but we have to go find what 17 is starts with 1 we need to find what 17 is going down going down going down <clears throat> okay they said accepted standards nothing but under fourth part which is our uh, fire and life safety we are here at 17 so 17 point means we are going to we have been asked to we if it's, if it's applicable asked to refer all these which is is 636 1988 884 1985 901 1988 so and so so and so let us just count how many are we even talking about 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 okay it keeps 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 going until we find 18 which is here that's a lot that's definitely a lot but we are going to find what is only needed for us right so remember that uh, so there's no point in worrying about okay so much we should just be knowing what is needed for where when we have to look at for the appropriate references and code right so <clears throat> when that uh, point asked us to find out what 417 is we have to find out the good practices from here okay let us randomly pick uh, one code let's say if you again see there are codes which is from 1979 or even 1977 which is there let us take this and do a search As you could see a very old standard 1977 specification for snatch block for use with fiber rope for fire brigade use okay let us take the late one of the recent ones 
is to 2012. So this is emergency rescue tender fire uh, sorry functional requirements right so all these which is listed here is cross references to uh, various other IS standards right developed by BAS so it is just enough if we know what to refer where to refer when you arrive at a situation that you have to refer right so uh, we will again uh, quickly go back to fire protection I told you about this I also uh, I have put about static water tank static water storage tanks in the PPT but look at the third one firefighting pump house it says the requirement shall be given as below right look at the rules it is preferable to install the pump at ground floor fine ground level to be situated <coughs> so as to be directly accessible from the surrounding ground level okay pump house shall be uh, installed not lower than the second basement when installed in the second basement staircase with direct accessibility or through an enclosed passage with 120 minutes fire rating from the ground shall be provided <coughs> so if you look at it there are so many rules in terms of pump house shall be separated by firewalls because they said fire door here firewalls here at the minimum of two hours uh, fire rating well ventilated water stagnation should be avoided <coughs> nothing to be dumped in that particular room right which room are we talking about anyone we are talking about firefighting pump house right but in India we uh, as in some of the spaces we must have seen slowly people start dumping things under the in the pump room staircase uh, uh, near the staircase under the staircase and all that right so that is why the uh, standards are very specific about don't do anything no other utility should be uh, planned there right so there's so much of details to be observed here and it doesn't stop here it goes on okay okay that's about it sorry next is automatic sprinkler installation again the requirements if you look at it there are so much of requirements to be looked at first then they talk about this automatic high velocity and low uh, medium velocity spray systems they talk about 421 meaning what anybody can say Accordance with good practice, we just have to go to fourth part. We are already in the fourth part. We have to go down to the list of standards in this more part, chapter or more chapter, yeah. And look at 21. 21 will probably have one or a couple of more standards which we have to look at. They also say Annex C, Annex E. What is Annex E? We will look at it. I will tell you about the Annex in the uh, next part of the lecture right so next is fixed foam gas based suppression system and automatic water mill systems along with this okay so uh, of course the problem or the complication here is the rules are uh, rules for fire protection system is uh, scattered across uh, uh, code part 4 especially when you again go back to your AC and uh, mechanical transportation systems you will again find so many references to many of the fire uh, protection standards the rules perhaps if you if you're talking about a particular whatever we did now in terms of these nine topics is uh, <coughs> through fixed firefighting installations fixed firefighting is these whatever we fix but when you're talking about rules for a lift room rules for an electrical panel room we have to go to the respective volume two services uh, under the services we will have to see electrical so they will say in an electrical room what is the precaution that you are supposed to take from a fire uh, prevention and fighting protection technique right so it is scattered all across the, the code and there are specific IS codes for each of it which is available uh, for reference but why we started and just looked at it is because 
these nine topics come directly under the fire protection in NBC, right? I'm just trying to say this is not the only way of looking at it, right? So with this, uh, we should perhaps stop here for the next break. And uh, this is all about the first part, which is about rules for fire protection. Uh, of course, you should also know which one to look at. I will just quickly go to the PPT ones. So I told you about this HFC 227EA, which is nothing but heptafluoropropane, right? So, and it is also, uh, when I showed you the PPT, it also uh, spoke about IS15517-2004, which is nothing but, okay. Uh, gaseous fire extinguishing systems, HFC227, EA, heptafluoropropane extinguishing systems. So, like I told you, there are, there are, there are separate codes, exclusive codes, for each of it, for every detail that we could think of. We don't have to remember everything, but it is important that we are aware of these codes. When there is a requirement, we should know where to look at. That is all about this. With this, so let's take a break, quick break, stop the video here before we continue further. Hmm. Okay, so welcome to the last and final part of this uh, BTU E section uh, so lecture series and building services 3. Uh, <clears throat> so this is we are dealing with the uh, national building code, firefighting requirements, uh, fire protection requirements and firefighting requirements and this has a specific stress on high rise buildings in India, right. I've, I told you before there's not uh, much of a PPD content, uh, we will have a couple of slides and we directly get to the uh, NVC itself, right. So just that this is being stressed here, we should have this question of what is a high rise building? What is a high rise building? So for those who are in metropolitan cities, you must have seen skyscrapers, People who lived in Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore must have seen how tall the buildings in the present context are, <coughs> right? So what according to you is a high-rise building is of no importance because we are concerned about what a high-rise building is according to the codes, right? Uh, building codes. So what is a high-rise building? Is it uh, 10 meters and above, is it 15 meters and above, is it 25 meters and above or 30 meters and above? Which is the right answer? I am not going to tell again, it is for you to figure out. But I will give you a reference to the code. High rise building is a building which is of 15 meters or above in height, irrespective of its occupancy. This is as per NBC part 4 okay building <coughs> a 15 meter or above in height irrespective of its occupancy is going to be called as high rise building okay i am uh, in part 4 fire and life safety of national building code of india i am navigating to the contents of this part a chapter we uh, have we have seen fire protection uh, you know what we will do this of course <coughs> I told you I will explain you about the annex the annexures uh, talks about uh, calorific values of common materials we have studied some of these tables in our uh, first or second if I'm not wrong first lecture of mine to understand the combustible and non combustible materials uh, annexure B talks about <coughs> industrial occupancy C talks about data regarding fire resistance D talks about fire drill and evacuation procedures for high rise buildings. Note this point very, very related to the 10th subheading of this module. Annexure E talks about additional requirements of high rise buildings. Okay, we have Annexure D and E talking something very specific about high rise buildings. We will have a look at it. Annexure F is only for the atriums, G is only for commercial kitchens. H is for uh, car parking facilities, <coughs> J and K for metro stations and trainways, M is for industrial building, uh, venting in industrial buildings, 
right uh, before we uh, get into the fire drill procedure and additional requirements for high rise buildings they say what do you mean by additional requirements of high rise building that means uh, apart from, in addition to whatever is told in the previous 5 6 uh, headings the additional requirements are also to be taken care but how do we know which is high rise and how do we take this up together because i'll just click on the scope <coughs> we have all these definitions right how do we know which one to refer it's that is where our uh, understanding and knowledge our awareness of the nbc comes in because if you see even though this starts with covers the record the, the entire chapter covers the record of fire prevention safety and protection of buildings <coughs> this specifies occupancy wise classification constructional aspects egress requirements and protection features that are necessary to minimize danger to life and property from fire good very neat definition <coughs> they say the provisions of this part are applicable to all high rise buildings means whatever is discussed are going to be discussed in the uh, subheads 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 before we jump to the annexures. All that which is said in the first <coughs> 5 or 6 subheads is going to be applicable for high rise buildings also, unless and until it is specified saying this is excluded, right. So, all that is going to be applicable to the high rise buildings without any question. <coughs> So, uh, so the day they it's even though it's started with scope, I'm going back to the contents, the terminology. Terminology is something to educate us about the applicable terminologies in this chapter. So we will jump to fire prevention. <coughs> okay. So from here is. Okay, fire prevention is here, yeah. So, classification of buildings based on occupancy, we have been talking about this, <coughs> right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and J. So, but in the first line, it also said irrespective of the occupancies, all the high rise buildings, all this have to be applicable. So, under A, uh, we discussed about, in the previous part, we discussed about parts a1, A2, A3, hotel A type, A6, A7 and all that. So, this is what they are talking about here. Subdivision under each of these categories is discussed here. We spoke about, we took this example of educational buildings which is under group B. <coughs> okay. So, uh, for those, we, we are uh, studying in college. So, let's see where it would uh, get classified. Schools up to senior secondary, all other training institutions. <coughs> okay, so we are in subdivision B2. All right, right. So this talks about the classification first of all the buildings till uh, G H J. Okay, then the zones. So basically, all that which is <coughs> which we have been studying in the last three four lectures are applicable to high rise buildings also. Right. So, keeping that in mind, we will again go back to, okay, uh, this, so one we studied about fire prevention, next let's uh, see life safety to understand, uh, it's, it's, if, if we have to go through each of this in detail, it is going to take us hours and hours of time. I will just try to introduce or go through some of it, so that we understand that we have discussed about some of this at least somewhere in our lecture. <clears throat> right so we studied about we referred few tech uh, definitions or you know uh, the contents from the code and fire prevention now i am in for life safety let's see if we have uh, studied anything here <clears throat> so they are talking about exit requirements exit may be a fire exit doorway and internal staircase etc 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 leading to a refuge area or to the terrace of the roof of a building okay so an exit so basically exit we studied uh, different types of exits from our terminologies 
So unless and until specified lift escalators, all this shall not be considered as exits and shall not constitute any part of the required exit. So all these are applicable rules. So if if some somebody who is interested for probably during a vacation, it would be an interesting exercise to go through the part four and uh, get printouts and tick the relevant ones you think you it's very applicable in your uh, regular life uh, where you are seeing witnessing uh, the inappropriate use of fire lifts or fire exit ways where because there are some cases where they say fire exit way and they dump uh, some of their uh, use it that it get that gets used as a storage area you know part time storage area so when you uh, this exercise when you do it in a vacation just to put a tick on the relevant applicable uh, rules that you think is uh, you know you are seeing seeing it or seen it somewhere uh, so that we get ourselves familiarized to some of these which is mentioned here so that we can try to become a better architect by knowing all these rules and regulations right so they even give directions in terms of diagrams in terms of what it has to be see here the door is not opening outside when somebody is rushing out you can't uh, Uh, afford to spend a couple of more minutes to figure out the door is open or closed, keeping the shutter inside. This has to be completely clear, including it has to be free of door opening, right? <coughs> so for basement, what is it? Especially when you have high-rise buildings, there is going to be a basement. So what is it? How do we deal with it? So based on occupant load, what is the load factor, right? So all these, okay, this is. and load for the maximum occupancy so this is a sign is that uh, you know uh, which has to be put saying it, all the fire exits are planned for these many people right persons permitted within the space or room so overloading we are talking about overloading right and number of exits arrangements of exits right so this talks about life safety first talks about fire prevention the second is talking about life safety right so for, let's again go back to the original content then third is fire protection we have seen that in the previous uh, uh, part of this video <coughs> so now when we know all this is done that is when we have to go to annexure d and e let's let me click on annexure d first and this is for conducting fire drill and evacuation procedures for high rise buildings it talks it starts with introductions then it goes on to alarms any person discovering fire shall immediately report to the fire brigade unless he has a personal knowledge that has a, such a report has been made no person no person shall make issue post maintain any order <coughs> that would require any person to take unnecessary delaying action prior to reporting such condition to the fire brigade drills fire drills shall be conducted in accordance with fire safety plans at least once in every 3 years for the first 2 years of the building therefore it can be conducted in every once in every 6 months so this is this is to make sure we familiarize the users on how to exit and also to make sure all the equipments which is supposed to work including a fire door works properly and we don't end up discovering that a fire door or some of the fire extinguishers is not working when there is actual fire <coughs> right so signs and uh, plans the display of all that floor numbering signs stair and lift identification signs stair re entry signs is all about signs fire safety plan command center who is going to be there who is going to be in charge so it talks about all this it would be a, a nice so uh, uh, thing to know all this if we can read through this okay uh without further delay we will see what annexure e is additional requirements of high rise buildings starts with 
Hire is building very general statement. Shall receive special attention with respect to fire and life safety, particularly with regarding to planning, design, execution, and maintenance training. We spoke about this in the previous lecture. Why is it? <coughs> why is it 15 meter and why it is difficult for anybody to tackle fire after 15 meters because of several restrictions. Right. That is why this is uh, getting into a category of special uh, attention and all that. So they talk about <coughs> evacuation, stack effect, posing challenges towards pressurization and exhaust of smoke, zoning which we which we just discussed in the fire uh, prevention, challenge ex challenges experienced by fire personnel in reaching the place of fire and towards evacuation. Right. So these. Uh, led to a special attention or a special topic saying additional requirements for high rise buildings. This is relatively uh, small, which we should be looking at. This also quickly gives a reference to electrical services. Quick reference meaning it asks us to go to section 11 of National Electric Code 2011, which is to be looked at because only so basically. Uh, we have to understand electrical services and the fire requirements through an electrical services perspective, right? Only then it would make sense because you should know what is HT, what is LT, why this has to be this, why this needs to be protected and all that. We have to talk about that subject first and then look at what can in the event of fire what is needed. That is why the uh, NBC and several other IS codes give appropriate references to each other so that uh, together it is the puzzle is understood as a whole right uh, then it also talks about fire protection it started with general statement then it uh, started with uh, the evacuation strategy fire safety refuge area and now for fire protection fire and life safety audit helipad right so it stops here that means uh, uh, we will also stop it right here. So this marks the end of part 2 of this uh, video which also means we have completed the entire building services <coughs> uh, 3 like uh, building services 3 air conditioning mechanical transportation and fire protection. Uh, so again, I thank you all for uh, joining and showing interest in watching this lecture series. I again hope to meet you all uh, in a different subject uh, in this video e Shikshana program. Let us again quickly <coughs> acknowledge the VTU e-learning team who is working behind us, whose faces are not known and still they are working hard to get the lectures across the right platform and especially during uh, times like this of COVID, the pandemic situation where we are not sure of when we are beginning offline classes uh, with uh, proper certainty. I hope these videos are definitely going to be of some use to all of us. And last but not the least, uh, I as an architect, I have just brushed up on many of the concepts. If anybody is interested, it is very important to uh, not let your interest stop there, go deep into it, understand more and any experts who is watching this uh, series of videos, please, I would have a request, please correct me if I was wrong at any point. Uh, and, and finally, I would thank the students and wish you all the best. Thank you.